Okay guys, so today I'm going to be changing out the spider pump for the 350, Chevy 350. I do already have a new gas tank, a new fuel pump, new fuel filter. I already verified I'm getting fuel all the way up to the rails here. And it's still not firing on up. It does turn over if I put some gas in the uh, throttle body here in the intake it will definitely start on up so still having an issue with the fuel this is going to be the last remaining thing that i need to change out the gas tank was rusted and the fuel pump as well was just corroded so that had to be replaced i need to go ahead and take everything on off here i have already taken off the top portion for the intake easily just take that off with a 10 mil bolt on there other thing i need to do is take off this fan shroud so we're going to start with that first and then we'll get on to the engine here now this is my first time doing this as well so i'm going to just go through it with you guys let you know any tips hints tricks whatever it may be so going to take off this fan shroud i see one two three about three 10 mil bolts did have some extra bolts we got three up here there's supposed to be two on each side down below if you just look and then two as well on this side and now this thing should just pop on up next thing i'm going to do is loosen up the serpentine belt here I have a half inch wrench going to go on the back side and should be able to go ahead and loosen it on up. You're really going to want to take out all of the wiring up here and just free everything on up. Unplug the uh, vacuum hoses as well, the ones that run across on it. I know these are like plastic hoses, so just be careful with those. And another one. And then going to be taking off the throttle cables as well, along with the cruise control. Those out the way, and then we'll get this bracket out the way. There's two bolts holding it. I'm going to go ahead and take off this ground right here. Looks to be about a 14. Then we'll loosen up this uh, hose, this upper radiator hose. All right, so now that hose was taken off. That was kind of hard to take off. Again, this car has been sitting for quite a while. Try to get this wiring out of the way, possibly. Get this uh, hose off of here. It looks like a vent hose. There that goes. That's for the uh, PCV, I believe. And then we gotta take off the brake booster hose back here. It looks like the whole thing for the uh, <laughs> brake booster came off together. So we'll just leave that right there. We gotta take off this plug, this other plug. Looks like we got one back here. Let me work on that. There that goes. The top was starting to come off of there. Just easily snap that back into place. Get this vacuum line out of there out of our way. I think we might be ready to start working on this. It's about as clear I believe we're gonna get. I'm gonna take off these fuel lines. These nuts right here are gonna be eight mil. So those are completely loose. And then don't wanna lose this little bracket here. Other thing that I'm gonna do just to kind of free up some space is just move this icing compressor. Not gonna take off the lines, just gonna take it off of the mount and just slightly move it off, off here to the right. This is gonna be a half inch. Got the All right, so now it looks like everything is loose. Take off this last bolt in the back. It's a little bit easier than I thought it would be, honestly. It didn't really seem like a hard, too hard of a job. It's just more tedious because you got a lot of stuff just hovering over it. So it seems like what is holding me back is this water neck here for that upper upper hose. So let me take that on off. 
I might as well go ahead and change out that thermostat, man. That thing was stuck in there. Go ahead and change that on out. And now let's see if we can get this planning on, on out. dirty in here so here is what we need take these on out just pinch them oh man these are dirty pinch them and pull yeah, just shake them it should come on out they're dirty man there that one goes and these are your injectors basically that's how they run all right we got the Injectors out. I oh, gotta see how to take this on out. Let me get my screwdriver. Looks like these are just uh, clips, so just kind of pry it. This side, that side. Gotta get the back side. That pops off. Yeah, so there we are right there. Just gonna get my razor blade and just clean the surface. finished up it's not perfect but it's way better than what I had and I already did take out the towels out of the uh, porch there that was just to make sure that no dirt or liquid went down there where it's not supposed to so the parts have been all cleaned up they look pretty good and that was very filthy the uh, Plantum cover there and the intake intake tubing and then the fan covering looks pretty good just took off those stickers and I know I'll go ahead and just get that remaining bit of sticker off but I do have some new parts on over here so let's get onto this engine and start assembling things back together all right so first thing got to do is reattach the bracket for the injectors here now for the injectors, here are the old original injectors. These are what they call the poppet style. And this unit, you know, it's not pumping out any sort any sort of gasoline. So I went ahead and bought the new updated version. This is a remanufactured unit that I had bought off of eBay. This one has already been cleaned, but this is different style. This is more of a direct, more uh, injectors. This is more of a pump, just one central pump that goes ahead and sends the uh, gasoline. And so this is kind of like what you would see on your typical engine with the fuel rail, but obviously you don't have some sort of like fuel rail here this is it and so they say that this should really increase performance overall within the rpm range and as well increase gas mileage so i'm going to go ahead and install this into the car and you got to make sure to go ahead and run these correctly so i need to go ahead and take a look at that and uh, get that all set and so we can start covering this on up So there it is, it actually already has the numbers on the plenum and then just read the numbers off of here and just connect them to the proper number on there. So they're all pushed in there securely and so now ready to then put the upper plenum on here. So I just need to put on the gasket and we'll get this thing fitted on here. Brand new gasket on the plenum cover here, ready to be installed. It did come with the throttle body and injector pump gaskets as well. The injectors I bought comes with that gasket, so no need to install it. This is the brand I'm using, GB Remanufacturing. There's the part number right there, 5-261.
getting installed with the seal on there. guys so I believe everything is finished up got the serpentine belt loops around goes around power steering up to the AC on the idler alternator tensioner and back down to the crank and everything is hooked up connections ground on the thermostat TPS I think this is probably the IACV Got the PCV connections. Brake booster. So just gotta really make sure to go over everything. The AC is tightened up, the throttle cable bracket is tightened up, and on the throttle it is tightened up. So I believe we're ready to start it. Alright, so as you guys saw, I did try to start the car and it did not want to start. Before, I just poured some gas in it, it will start, so I knew it was a fuel system issue. And now it seems like randomly the ignition coil went out. So I already tested it, tested out the plug to make sure that it did in fact have power. It did have power, put a screwdriver in there with another one touching ground and there was no spark coming from the coil and we tested it multiple times. So I am going to have to go ahead and buy a new coil. Luckily they're under like 30 bucks. So it's just going to be a few more days before I can hear this run on its own. Yeah. 